blessing and yet we forgot God the more it seems that we get from God the more um, instead of turning that into reason for praise it seems like we forget who actually gave us all of this and here in uh, Manipur um, I know many of you struggle to many of the people here struggle to just make it have enough to put food on the table but at the same time I know that you could probably look back in your life and look and see how much God's given you. And um, so as brothers and sisters in Christ, some from America, some from Church um, I think it's true across every place and every time that if we get much blessing from God, we're, we can be prone to forget God. So I want you to, if you have your Bible on your phone or in hard copy, turn to Jeremiah chapter 2. And Jeremiah... As a prophet, of course, you probably know that prophet of God, and he's prophesying to the people in Jerusalem and in the surrounding areas of Judah, and they have had so much blessing from God, yet they've forgotten God. And as a result of that, God's judgment is coming, but God in his, in his unending, unstoppable love for his children is calling them to turn away from that and, and to turn back to him. He says this, Therefore, I will yet contend with you. Verse 9 of chapter 2 declares the Lord. And with your sons I will contend. For cross to the coastlands of Kittim and see and send to Kedar and observe closely and see if there has been such a thing as this. Has a nation changed gods when they were not gods? But my people, my people, have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this and shudder. Be very desolate, declares the Lord. This is a really serious matter that he says, my people, and, and we as people have been received in the new covenant, new life through the blood of Jesus Christ, we're his people. So across all time, this is true too, but back then it was they, the people of God had, had tossed aside the one true God for other gods, small g. And then verse 13, here's the, here's the main passage I want you to think about. I want us to soak in here. For my people have committed two evils. And it's a forsaking and replacing, two parts to it. It says, they have forsaken me, the fount of living waters. That's the, the first step. It's not the replacement first. It's that uh, people in the United States, people in any country, people here in my own heart, I'm prone to, to turn away from the one who actually gives true satisfaction and meaning and purpose in life. Jesus said in his conversation with the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, are you familiar with that? John chapter 4, he has this conversation with this woman by Jacob's well in Samaria. And he says, I am the living water. He who comes to me will never thirst again. And in the, in the Old Testament, the same wording is used, that God is the one who is living water, fresh water that we find in him, real peace and fulfillment and satisfaction in life. Augustine, this man from northern Africa who was a teacher of the Bible a long time ago, back in the 300s AD, 400, early 400s AD, he said, O oh Lord, you have made us for yourself, but our hearts are always restless until they find the rest in thee. And, and yet we're prone to go back to the restlessness, forsaking the one who actually gives us true rest and satisfaction, the fountain of living water. You know, <clears throat> and what have... What have God's people replaced the fount of living water with? 
to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can't hold any water, that cannot hold any water at all. You know, a cistern is, is like just a concrete kind of basin. It's not a well, it's not a river, it's not fresh water, it's not even a lake or a pond, it's just a concrete basin where people would pour water in. So in the United States where I pastored in Grand Rapids, we had a baptistry, you know, and it was just, it was just a tub. A cistern is like a tub. <laughs> and after the water sits in there a while, it grows stagnant, and if it grows even more stagnant, it actually can give you dysentery. <laughs> you get sick from old stagnant cistern water. Mm. And what's worse is that you pour water in the cistern, but it's broken, so it's just going to drain out into the mud. And that's what God's people were doing way back in the early 600s and late 500s uh, BC. But same is true, I think, for God's people here. If I search in my own heart, I'm prone to turn from the one who actually gives true satisfaction and fulfillment in life and instead replace. So I forsake and then I replace it with cheap imitations. Satan is full of cheap imitation temptations. Like if you do this or if you get this or you make that amount of money, if you have this, then you'll be satisfied. <laughs> And it's like we can make all sorts of gods. You know, in, in, in South India, even around Assam where we were before, there were gods everywhere, you know, lowercase g gods, you know, all kinds of Hindu gods and goddesses. And, and you drive by little temples in there. But in America, we have gods too. It's uh, the car that we polish in China and park in our garage. It's our 401k or retirement portfolio. It's our education credentials. It's um, how big our house is, all kinds of various things, or, or celebrities in Hollywood, or in <clears throat> athletics, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, we actually have a television show, you know, y'all aware of American Idol, you know, like, let's not be any more obvious, can we, you know, we worship these people, <laughs> and yet, you know, all this stuff is just broken, empty cisterns, in God, the living water is when the thirst that he's actually placed in our hearts can be quenched, not in anything else. So, what have you maybe been using as a cheap imitation replacement? Think about that. Let's just uh, pause. Self-reflection time, okay? Let God search your heart. Just close your eyes for a moment. Bow your heads. I'm going to do that and, and ask God this simple question. Lord, uh, what have I been turning um, to instead of turning to you and what have I replaced you with? Is it possessions or power, or prestige or a job or things that are advertised on TV or all kinds of things? We can turn to our friends to satisfy our, our need and meaning that they can't, they can't meet that need, only God can. And so just confess that to God. In your own words, what you are prone to wander to, and you feel it in your heart, like the hymn writer said, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God we love. So take my heart, take and seal it, seal it through <clears throat> my courts of love. Oh God, we are confessing right now that we're prone to wander and to replace, uh, to forsake, and yet we know that we're your people and you're never going to let go of us. You've saved us, you are sanctifying us, making us more like Jesus Christ, and so God, we pray that you work in our hearts to direct our attention back to you for the fulfillment of the need that you can, you alone can satisfy Lord, we turn to you, the living water. We cast Ooh. down our idols, the thrones we've set up, the, the small g gods we, are, we tend to worship. Uh, we recognize that what we focus our time and our resource, our energy on, is what we, the focus of all that is what we really are worshiping. It's too often that's our job or our, what we have. Lord, help us to focus our time, our energy, our resources on you. And lifting up you. Glorifying you. Making you known through our lives. As these people work today in this cafe, 
pray that they make you know, put your character on display through their work and realize all their work can be worshipped to you. Yes. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to confess and being the God who's always faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from our unrighteousness and from our wandering. In Jesus' name. To bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 